All right, I'm about to do something that a lot of people have very strong opinions about. For the next 60 days, I'm going to be testing two of the most hyped and debated diets out there, Whole30 and the Carnivore Diet, back to back. One is plant heavy and eliminates processed foods. The other, well, it's nothing more than meat, eggs, and animal products. Here's my hypothesis. What if the benefits that people rave about from the Carnivore Diet aren't really special to the diet itself, but maybe simply from cutting out all the processed crap that most people eat, which is also what people do when they go on a Whole30 type deal. And I'm going to be tracking everything literally everything, body fat, muscle mass, blood markers, metabolism, strength, VO2 max, even sleep and recovery data. So you definitely wanna make sure you keep watching to discover what happens when a registered dietitian like myself tests this theory with full transparency and what this experiment I'm starting at the time of this recording will entail. What's up guys, this is Andres Ayesta here, registered dietitian, strength coach, and founder of Planet Nutrition. If you're new to this channel, I help busy professionals, high performers, and dads cut through the BS and achieve sustainable results with nutrition strategies that actually work in real life. Today's video is a little bit different. Instead of just talking about nutrition science, I am becoming the experiment. Over the next 60 days, you get an unfiltered look at what really happens when I transition from whole foods to carnivore while controlling all of the variables that most gurus never mention. So if you're tired of nutrition debates with no real data behind them, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a single update in this series. For over a decade, as a dietitian, I've watched the carnivore diet gain massive popularity with some incredible transformation stories, not only on the physical, but also a magic pill that cures everything from autoimmune diseases to seeing unicorns. But here's what bugs me. When people switch to carnivore, they're not just adding meat, they're completely eliminating all ultra processed foods, refined carbohydrates, excessive sugar, alcohol, and many other foods that may not be in your diet in large amounts in the first place. So the question becomes, is it the old meat approach that's magical or is it simply the elimination of all the crap? That's what I wanna find out. Not through theories or opinions, but through a control experiment on myself with full transparency. And I'm doing this because I'm sick of getting comments from people that tell me, well, but you've never done it. Well, here you go, I'm doing this. So let's dive into the design of this experiment. Here's exactly what I'm gonna be doing over the next 60 to 80 days. First, I'm going to establish my baseline with comprehensive testing. Some of my friends at the ASPI or ASPI here in Tampa are going to help me get some of the testing done. First, I'm gonna do a DEXA scan for precise body composition. I'm also gonna do a full blood panel, including lipids, inflammatory markers, hormones, and glucose. And I'll be doing some performance testing with a three rep max on bench press and deadlift, a VO2 max that I'm going to estimate using my WHOOP and a specific protocol that they recommend. I'm gonna be using validated hunger and satiety questionnaires, and I'm gonna do 24 seven tracking of sleep quality, HRV, respiratory rates, and recovery metrics using my whoop. Then comes phase one, which is 30 days on a whole foods diet. Only minimally processed nutrient dense foods. I'm cutting out wheat, most of dairy products, minimal to no alcohol consumption, and a combination of animal and plant-based foods, leans and some higher fat meats, vegetables, fruits, potatoes, some ancient grains, just a standard Whole30 diet. They're going to also be calorie and protein control. I'm going to be consuming around 2000 calories per day, so I'm going to be at a slight deficit, and protein intake is gonna be carefully matched to what I'm gonna be eating also in the carnivore phase. Now, throughout this period, I'm gonna be assessing and monitoring my WHOOP data, like this guy right here, and subjective measures of hunger and fullness along with my overall energy, mood, and performance. Plus, I'm going to be sharing the real-life challenges of following each diet, cooking, travel, cravings, digestion, and how sustainable they actually feel. After the first 30 days, I'm going to repeat all the testing, and then I'm going to have a seven-day period of at libitum eating, which means eating to fullness without strict tracking. And I'm going to assess natural hunger and food choices because I feel this is more translatable to real-world conditions of most people who are just not tracking every single calorie. Then we enter a two-week washout period. In scientific research, a washout period, it's essentially a reset button between experimental phases. For my diet experiment, I'm including a two-week washout period between the whole foods and carnivore phases. So what does it do? Well, first of all, it prevents contamination, which eliminates lingering effects from the whole foods phase before starting carnivore. Second, it resets 
metabolism, digestion. It allows my gut bacteria and enzyme production to return closer to baseline. And number three, improves data quality, which ensures I'm measuring each diet's distinct effects and not just the combined effects of both. Now, during these two weeks, I'll return to my normal balanced eating pattern without rigid tracking, not strictly whole foods, not carnivore, just regular nutrition, which is the way that I eat today, including both animal and plant-based foods, and at the same time, some processed items as well. Now, this step is crucial for the scientific validity of my experiment. Without it, I really couldn't isolate what's unique about the carnivore approach versus simply eating clean. Then I'm gonna be retesting everything again before I start uh, phase two. And then phase two is going to be spending 30 days on a strict carnivore diet. All animal-based foods, meat, eggs, animal fats, no plants, no fiber, no supplements except salt and some of the things I'm already taking. Same calorie and protein targets as phase one. It's most likely gonna be two to three meals plus maybe one snack daily, but I'm gonna be testing that as I go. And finally, I'm gonna repeat the testing after the carnivore phase, followed by another seven day at limited period to assess hunger and natural food preferences within the carnivore state. Now, what am I really testing in here? My hypothesis is straightforward. The benefits people report from carnivore may simply come from eliminating processed foods, not from anything special about eating only meat. Specifically, I want to answer this question. When transitioning from a clean whole foods diet to carnivore, will there be actually significant changes in blood markers? body composition and performance. If calories and protein are matched between phases, will the supposed benefits of carnivore still appear? What happens to hunger and satiety when I'm not tracking during the at libitum periods? How do objective physiological markers like HRV, sleep quality, and recovery changes between phases? And the big question, are the carnivore benefits that people report actually just from eating only meat or just from cutting out all the processed crap that most people eat in the first place? Now, I know for a fact that there will be differences in energy and other areas Areas in one diet versus the other. For example, I did a keto experiment back in 2017 where I could clearly feel different when you're in a deep state of ketosis, which I will be probably during the carnivore diet phase for sure. But I will also address the issue of sustainability. Now, this experiment isn't really about proving one diet is superior to another. This is why I call myself diet agnostic. It's about understanding what's actually happening when people see results with restrictive approaches. Every day, I work with high performing people who have been on a decade long diet roller coaster because they can't separate fact from fiction and they jump from one extreme diet to another chasing a magic bullet but what if the answer is simpler what if simply cutting out or reducing ultra processed foods is responsible for most of the benefits people attribute to that specific diets or maybe i'll be proving wrong and there's really something special or carnival either way we'll have actual data instead of just opinions now this is an n equals one experiment of course and you're gonna take that information however you want to take it but at least it's gonna be something that you can use for your own perspective so how how can you follow along? Well, throughout this experiment, one of the reasons I'm also doing it is because I want to document everything with complete transparency. I'm going to be sharing weekly update videos showing my progress and my experience, daily meal documentation on Instagram and TikTok, full disclosure of my blood work, my body composition, and the performance changes. And then I'm going to be sharing also real-time whoop data showing sleep, HRV, and recovery metrics. Honest reporting of both positive and negative effects. Think of this as a nutrition experiment that you've been maybe curious about but you haven't really wanted to try it yourself. So if you're tired of nutrition debates with no real data behind them, I want to make sure you hit that subscribe button right now and turn on notifications because this isn't really about pushing a diet. It's about finding the truth about what actually works. So make sure also you follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Andres Ayesta and Andres the Dietitian um, in each for daily updates, behind the scenes footage of my stuff, my actual meals throughout this experiment, the ins and outs of everything. Now, I'm curious, drop a comment below. What do you think is going to happen? Here. You think carnivore is going to show additional benefits beyond a clean whole foods diet or is eliminating processed foods the real key here? I'll be ready for comments and also answering your questions in the next video. Now, for those who want to take their own nutrition to the next level and you don't really want to wait until the results of this experiment to figure out what to do, I have a free training and a few resources that are free and the exact system that I use with my clients on how I can provide uh, the results and the link is in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm excited for this. I'll see you in the next update of this experiment that kicks off on May 19, 2025 at the time of this recording.